This month on MasterTech, we're going to take a look at the navigation and communication systems available for Chrysler Group vehicles, including two different navigation systems, satellite radio, and the Uconnect hands-free phone system. By the time this program is over, you'll be familiar with the components and operation of the factory and dealer-installed RB1 navigation system and the factory-installed navigation system used in the new Chrysler Pacifica and with the Uconnect hands-free phone system, which is available both as a factory option in Pacifica and from Mopar. We'll also cover some diagnostic items related to these navigation and communication systems, and we'll address the service implications of these high-tech electronic accessories. Since you may have already seen vehicles with one or more of these systems in your dealership, it's a good time to learn how they work so that you'll be able to handle any problems and get the vehicle back to the customer. Now, of the two kinds of navigation systems found in Chrysler Group cars and trucks, the RB1 in-dash navigation radio has the widest vehicle application. It's available as a dealer-installed accessory for all 2003 vehicles and for all 2002 vehicles with a flush mount radio. The RB1 is offered as factory-installed optional equipment in the 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee and Chrysler 300M. The RB1 system's components include the navigation radio unit, which uses a navigation DVD-ROM to supply map and database information, and a GPS antenna, which is located in different areas depending on the vehicle, but is generally near the top of the instrument panel. The antenna requires a clear line of sight to the sky in order to receive signals from up to eight global positioning satellites. The RB1 unit uses these signals and the data on the DVD to plot the vehicle's position on the map display, plan routes, and provide the driver with other useful information. Voice or tone prompts delivered through the audio system's front speaker channel give directions that help the driver navigate to a selected destination. The RB1 navigation system is active on the vehicle's data bus, so it can communicate with other electronic modules and with the DRB3. The buttons on the RB1 unit control both the navigation and audio systems and include a power and volume control, a select encoder with enter and cancel buttons, mode buttons on the left side of the color display, and preset, tune, and seek buttons on the right. If the vehicle is equipped with remote controls mounted on the back side of the steering wheel, the left-hand control is used to scroll through the menu options and to enter or cancel, and the right side is used to adjust the volume and enable the navigation mode. When the RB1 is powered up, pressing the Nav Mode button brings up the navigation main menu. The options at the navigation menu include destination, setup, option, route, and map. The destination option is used to navigate, which we'll see in detail later. The setup menu has display options, guidance prompts that can be set to voice or tone, and language and units of measure settings. Under the option menu, you can store the vehicle's current position, edit the route list, address book, and trip itinerary, and view GPS information and other system information. The route menu allows you to change route properties once a destination is chosen. You can delete the current destination, display a list of directional route maneuvers, create a detour, and change the current method of travel. Selecting the map option at the main menu displays the map screen, which includes a detailed road map with the vehicle's current position, maneuver information, and several icons. Let's run through an example of how the RV1 system works starting with entering the destination we want to drive to. Use the selector to highlight the destination option and press the enter button. This brings up the find destination menu. There are eight ways to enter a destination. You can enter a street address or a point of interest, use a recent route, a phone number, or an intersection, or select a location with the map cursor as part of a trip itinerary or an entry in the address book. For this example, we'll enter a street address that we want to find. So, I highlight the street address option and press the enter button. And that pulls up the find address menu. Then, we'll enter the street name by spelling it out using the select encoder and pressing enter after each letter in the street's name. Then, I go to the street list, 
pick the street name from the list and enter the address number. Highlight Done and press Enter and the RB1 asks you to confirm the destination. Select OK and the system calculates the route and brings up the map screen. The destination is shown as a star on the map. Now I'm ready to drive to the destination I've entered and the RB1 system will guide me along the way with voice directions and a visual reference on the map display. As I traveled along the route that the RB1 navigation system planned, it told me when to turn and in what direction. In a half mile right turn. And I kept track of my position and monitored upcoming maneuvers by glancing at the display every now and then. Although it's a fairly sophisticated piece of technology, diagnosing and servicing the RB1 isn't much different from other audio systems. Initializing the navigation software is required before it's first used and after installing software updates. The software is automatically loaded when a new DVD is inserted. The vehicle should be driven for a few miles after a software update in order to synchronize the navigation system. Since the RV1 system is active on the vehicle's communications network, it's treated like any other module on the bus when it comes to diagnosing problems. On the DRB3, choose Body Diagnostics at the Select System menu, and then select the Audio Systems option to access the diagnostic trouble codes and related functions for the RB1 unit and wiring and the GPS antenna. The navigation system does have some limitations, mostly related to the reception quality of the GPS signals. So, as mentioned earlier, it's important that the antenna area is kept clear. You should also know that, for safety reasons, some data entry functions are not available while the vehicle is moving. Beyond that, customers should make sure the software is updated periodically, and they shouldn't have many problems. Questions about the operation of the RV1 navigation system can be directed to Daimler Chrysler Alpine Customer Service by calling 866-733-5492. The RB1 Owner's Manual also has complete details for operating the system and using its many features. Next, we're going to cover the navigation system used in Chrysler Pacifica. As you saw in last month's Master Tech, the new Chrysler Pacifica has many advanced features, including an available built-in navigation system. Like the RB1, the Pacifica navigation system gives a visual display of the vehicle's position on a map and also audibly prompts the driver with directions that help in reaching a selected destination. In a half mile, right now, these prompts come through the front speakers and override other audio signals with the exception of audio from the Uconnect phone system. At the heart of the Pacifica navigation system is the navigation unit and its wiring harness, which is located in the left rear of the storage area. A navigation DVD, the same as that used in the RB1 system, is inserted into Pacifica's navigation unit. A 5-inch thin film transistor screen in the instrument cluster serves as the navigation display. The image that the driver sees is actually projected onto the cluster display. An instrument panel switch pod is located to the right of the instrument cluster and has nav, enter, and cancel buttons and four scroll direction arrows. The antenna is located on top of the instrument panel, under the dash cover, and the cable runs along the IP and down the right A-pillar. The antenna cable is spliced under the right side kick panel. When the ignition is turned on, Pacifica's navigation system returns to either on or off, whatever it was during the previous key cycle. To turn the system on, press the nav button on the instrument panel switch pod. The navigation display shows the menu options, which allow the driver to call up recent routes and the trip itinerary, work with system settings, and enter a destination. Destinations can be entered by specifying an intersection, a street address, a business phone number, a point of interest, or an address stored in the address book. You can also use a recent route or the map cursor. While en route, navigation information can be displayed as a map, turn-by-turn -turn instructions, or a combination of the two. Voice or tone audio prompts and their volume, screen brightness, 
map orientation, and other features can be adjusted under the system settings menu. Like the RB1 system, Pacifica's navigation system communicates with the DRB3 and is treated like other modules on the communication bus for diagnosis. It's under the body diagnostics menu, but unlike the RB1, its diagnostics are accessed under the navigation option. DTCs and related functions are supported. The only real service concerns are making sure the antenna has a clear line of sight to the sky and checking for kinks or damage to the antenna cable. The navigation system is covered in the Pacifica owner's manual as well as in the service information. Another high-tech feature that's offered to customers as a factory option or as a dealer-installed accessory is the Uconnect hands-free phone system, which combines voice-activated commands and Bluetooth wireless technology to simplify in-vehicle phone calls. Uconnect allows the use of up to five customer-supplied phones that communicate with system components to enable the user to send and receive phone calls store and recall phone numbers in an address book, and use other functions, all while the phone is unplugged. Once a compatible phone is paired to the system, Uconnect automatically transfers active calls between the phone and the vehicle when the user enters or exits the vehicle. Transfer call. Transfer call to Uconnect. Boom. Uconnect overrides other audio signals, Hello? including the radio and navigation prompts and automatically mutes the radio when a call is in progress. Voice recognition capability gives users the ability to use the phone without having to pick it up, and the voice command phone book can store up to 128 numbers. Uconnect will be available as a factory installed option only on the 2004 Chrysler Pacifica, but the Mopar Accessories dealer installed version works with most model year 1996 and later Chrysler Group vehicles. The parts in the Mopar Uconnect kit are different from factory installed components, but both systems operate in a similar manner. In Pacifica, system components include the Uconnect control pad located on the rear view mirror. Controls include the phone icon button, which turns the system on and off, and the voice command button. A microphone is also located on the rear view mirror. The Uconnect system's volume is controlled using the audio system's volume control. The hands-free module, which communicates with the customer's phone, is located beneath the center console between the second row seats. The signal from the hands-free module is routed through the vehicle's audio amplifier and is output through the speakers. The phone must be Bluetooth, hands-free, profile compliant, and the phone must be paired to the system before it can be used. Customers should refer to the Uconnect manual and their phone's owner's manual for the pairing procedure. Voice prompts indicate the pairing status. Once a phone has been paired to the system, you can do things like select a language as easy as this. First, press the phone icon button. Ready. Set up. Select one of the following. Registration, confirmation, select phone or language. Language. Select a language. English, Spanish, or French. Spanish. Spanish selected. Is this correct? Yes. Spanish selected. Returning to main menu. Ready. To place a call, first press the phone button and wait for the system to respond. Ready. Dial 1-800-719-5847. Dialing 1-800-719-5847. Is this correct? Yes. Dialing. Hi, you have reached Master Tech Go to Headquarters at 1 a.m. Then, to end the call, just press the phone button again. To answer an incoming call, just press the phone button when you hear the phone ringing. 
Hello. It's that simple. Diagnostics and service of the Uconnect system is also pretty simple. The system gives the user voice prompts for specific phone conditions, such as phone not connected, low phone battery, a weak or non-existing cellular connection, roaming, or non-supported function. As for DRB support, the Mopar Uconnect system is not active on the vehicle's data network and therefore can't communicate with the DRB. The factory version in Pacifica is on the bus, so you can use the DRB. Diagnostics can be accessed under the body system menu. The hands-free module option supports DTCs and other functions. For diagnostic help with the Mopar system, you can call the Uconnect support line at 877-734-5379. To get some additional training on the navigation and communication systems we've covered, sign up for a course from the Daimler Chrysler Academy School of Technical Training. Well, that does it for this month's Master Tech. Be sure to catch next month's program for the latest information about non-destructive paint repair. Thanks for watching.